Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Char B1 Tur, but before that, since it's Christmas, I want to do a little giveaway thing. So I'm giving away two packs of the Char B1, and all you need to do to enter is make sure you're subscribed, uh, give the video a little like, and write down in the comments what your favourite French vehicle so far is, and I will pick one at random, uh, probably in just under a week or so, and all you need to do if you win is reply to your original comment with your in-game name, and I will get it sent over to you as quick as possible. So, hope you enjoy and uh, good luck for that. So, onto the tank itself. Well, from what I can see, there about there's two different sides when people are talking about this thing. Is le at least what I've seen, and it's either that it's completely overpowered and needs to be stopped immediately, or it's just okay. And I'm somewhat in between because I like heavy tanks a lot, and I think the main thing with heavy tanks is where you play them on the map. So. With a tank like this, you could definitely really use that to its advantage. The first clip I'm going to show today was the earlier segment of this match where I just roll down an entire flank and take it out on my own. And you can do that in this tank. But I think that kind of clouds the mindset a bit, because if you're a bit too aggressive, you will run into that one thing that can just, like, chain shot heat off at you and knock you out, or you run into a marder or something, and, you know, it'll just it'll wipe you out immediately. Like, you are not invulnerable, but you can be. And you still need to play this tank cautiously, at least, maybe not as cautiously as you would play other tanks, but at least have it in mind not to just steamroll through and be incredibly aggressive because you will eventually get stopped. And the main drawback I think at the moment with this tank is that you don't have anything great to back it up. You've got a couple of okay uh, tanks, but if you're up tiered even slightly, they're just going to get shredded by everything you, yeah, you're going to meet. So keeping this tank alive is the most important thing you're going to have to keep in mind while you're playing it. You just need to focus on not dying, which I know is a silly thing to say, because obviously you're going to be doing that anyway, but you need to keep this tank alive, at least um, as well for the sake of the team, because if you are on like a great map for it, or, you know, there's not many other tanks that can really take shots and be the armour and be the spearhead, this tank needs to stay alive, because if it gets taken out, and it is the top tier vehicle someone has in their lineup, they're likely not going to really have anything else afterwards to back it up with. So yeah, I've got two clips today um, to show. I think one of them's um, more of a, like a cautious -y engagement, and the other one's a bit more like hold W and click on things. So uh, I'll get to that. But just before that, um, as always, I'll show you the lineup that I've been using so far while playing the Char B1. Right, the lineup that I've been using with the Char is um, the S35, which is it's a decent medium tank. Um, it's not too great in an up tier, but the armor is okay, depending on what you meet. Uh, you can angle it relatively effectively on the side here, and it's relatively sloped. You can bounce a couple of shots. The turret's pretty strong as well, but the reload is a bit lackluster. But it's an okay vehicle, and it will do the job. Um, as another backup, I want to go with the AMC-35, uh, as it does have a much quicker reload on the powerful cannon as well, um, at least for the tier. It's a, it's a decent 47mm, I'm having quite a lot of fun with it. And you do get scouting abilities as well, so you can practice doing things like that or gain a little bit of uh, extra RP as well. Um, for your SPA, uh, go with the P40, as it's really, really effective. It's possibly a bit under-tiered, actually. Uh, you can kill a lot of tanks with it and a lot of planes as well, and it's really, really good. Um, really recommend that. And for your aircraft, um, I've been going with the Potez 631. As you do have two 20mm cannons you can use to kill tanks from the top with, which is surprisingly really effective with the ground targets, and you do get the bomb drop as well with the two 100s, so that is a decent option as well. So, that was quicker than I usually do, but <laughs> anyway, on to the game. Right, the first match was on Sinai, and it was the first match I properly played, so it was more of like a test to see how the vehicle worked, because I, I played it a little bit in arcade just to grind out um, vehicles up to 2.3 to make a lineup with. So I used it a little bit there, and um, I was a little bit conflicted on it as well, because I'd already heard uh, quite a lot of conflicting things about if the armor was good, or if it can just get flanked too easily, or if low tiers just don't really suit the meta for a heavy tank. So what I wanted to do was just get to the corner of A as fast as I could, and just block the entire flank off. And it worked surprisingly well. Um, I was sort of thinking that I'm just going to get shot into the turret and then disabled and swarmed by a bunch of light tanks. But um, the armour did actually surprise me a lot more than, um, well, it worked a lot better than I thought it would, rather. So, I'm just getting up to the corner of A now, have a glancing look to the left and spy a Crusader Mark III. 
aim a little bit too low there. Um, the gun is good, but it doesn't have like a wide spool cone that some of the higher caliber guns have. But it still does a really decent job. Like I was really surprised with how well the 47 mm actually works. So just pushing up to the corner here, and I can see at least three tanks just um, blocking the way. So I thought. Let's test it out, be a little bit aggressive, as the Chihi there is the only thing that can really give me some trouble if I'm hold down. Get rushed from the side a little bit by the M2, rushed in the <laughs> slowest term, but managed to pretty accurately disable him with the hull mounted gun. The Chihi does get me in the Coppola, which is pretty damaging actually, it's the only place that can really do damage with APHE on this tank. But I think I'm just going to drive right at him and be aggressive because he probably doesn't know anywhere else to shoot me and if I'm moving it's a pretty difficult target. And it works. So just keep switching in between the hull and the turret just to wipe out all of these tanks. And they, at least these ones with the 37 mils cannot do anything to me. And even the Crusader up there as well is just really struggling to cause any damage whatsoever and just wipe all of them out just like that. And that's an entire flank gone. That's about, um, I think, a third of the team gone right there completely. And so... On the right map, in the right situation, this tank is very, very scary. So that's an example of how some matches go in this tank, but not all of them are that easy. Sometimes you need to be a little bit more careful. So hopefully the next clip shows that a little bit better. And the next clip is on Poland. It's a, I think, a 2.7 game. So what I wanted to do was just, again, I thought, cool, I'll be aggressive with it. Again, it seems to work quite well in that regard. So I'll just rush right up to A and do as much damage as I can. Uh, because the one thing I think I need to keep in mind is that I need to keep this tank alive, also because I'm trying to review it, so dying is a bit pointless, but also because there's not really a great uh, many options to spawn in afterwards if I die. I've got a plane, but after that it's just a couple of subpar uh, light and medium tanks, so I do need to be a little bit careful. So I just angle the camera around to look at the road, and I can see a Marder 3 there. Now, that's the one thing that I really don't want to see at all, because he can one-shot or disable my tank really, really easily. And I make sh uh, I need to make sure, excuse me, that I need to get the flank on now, I think, because there's no way that I can safely go head to head with that, uh, with the long reload and everything. If I mess up my shot and there's not a lot of spooling, I'm not gonna do um, well, I'm not gonna live very long, put it that way. So I can't pen a lot of these tanks at the angles they're at, so what I wanna do is flank onto the road and go round them, get some shots in the side with the turret um, cannon, just so I can disable them. Uh, I do take a shot from behind the fence there, do get a bit spooked by it. I, was, I think I jolted my mouse up because I was, I was like not expecting that. But um, still, see a Gepard around the road, but I don't angle completely because there might be a tank around the corner. And there is a Puma. And go right centre mass and knock the tank out on one shot, which, you know, did surprise me. I didn't think I would um, get in that effectively with the 47mm, but it is really, really uh, surprisingly good, actually. And I see the char is... Um, easily you can take out the Gepard there so I can just roll up through the town and get those flanking shots on. I can see a Panzer IV around the corner there, he has just taken out the char. So I do need to be careful because he can just heat me through the side. So what I'm doing here is going on cruise control 1 so the shoulder lock on the turret gun can remain stable and it'll hopefully make him push out because he thinks that I'm not going to get my gun off because I'm moving. And just there he does. So go through the side, kill the turret crew, and then roll off another one with the 75 for a very satisfying kill there. And it does do quite well for the double tap, this um, this setup. So I can hear a couple of shots going off to my left. Um, I, just, I don't want to push out completely because I could get shot from the back, the side, and I just need to be careful with it. So I go for the engine just to make sure that I'm not going to get taken out. Checks my right to make sure I'm okay to swing the hull around uh, for the hull cannon, but I overpen completely and don't do anything, but I do finish him off there easily enough. So I know there's a couple of tanks in the forest but I do want to decap the point at least or push up round and try and get some side shots on them because again these tanks can uh, just shoot me with heat through the front and negate all of my armor so I do need to be I do need to be careful if I'm, if I'm playing against Germany it's the most dangerous nation for sure and I think the playstyle does need to be uh, adjusted a little bit for that because everything can reliably do damage to you pretty much, apart from maybe the Panzer 3s. But um, it's still something to be completely wary of. And as there's a couple of tanks that I think are going to come and cap the point, I don't really want to sit on it, because again, I don't need the points. And plus, I don't want to draw too much tension to myself. But I do try and get a shot um, on the Panzer IV there, but it just goes into the track and I don't really do anything. 
So I think, sure, I'll push up. Just wait until he forgets about me, and hopefully he'll be pushing out to engage the other char there, and I can get a shot into the side if I pushed up a little bit further. So that's exactly what I'm going to do, but I do need to be a little bit careful because there is a lot of things that have died, and they're going to be coming out of the spawn. So the Marda has just died, so I don't need to worry about him anymore. He was killed by the AA, which is, again, very, very good. And I'm just... don't want to go too close to the forest because I don't know if there's anything else up there that could cause me some trouble, so I go in between the buildings over here. See a little gap of bless him. And he's out as well. And I'm just going to go in between B and A here because B's just been taken. And I want to make sure that we can at least win this match so I can show what rewards this tank can get on a good run. So I'm just going to check the forest now that I'm here just to see if anything does have its side onto me. And I do see a stern panzer there, so I try and go for the driver uh, but miss and get the gunner. And as he's backing off, it's going to be a bit too risky for me to engage him, uh, as he can just shoot me anywhere, I'm going to die, and I need to hit quite precisely. So I'm just going to ignore them, ignore the Panzer IV, and drive back to the B point. And I'm going to cut here, because I do just go back and forth, and nothing happens, it's a little bit dull. So, on my way back to the A point, I'm just checking around again, because we have lost a lot of people, people rather, and this whole flank has been lost, essentially. So, little Panzer II in the street there, try and go for the engine, but I miss. Just get the loader, but again, I can just swing the hull around really effectively, which compensates the reload and right through the back there to knock him out. And it does take a bit of time to get the lead on the 75 mm, but when you get it and you don't need to switch to it, it's really, really effective. Like, it does compensate quite well for the really slow um, fire rate of the 47 mm, and I think. After a bit of practice, it can um, it can work really, really effectively, and it's really satisfying as well. Like it's a lot of fun to get those kills. So I want to get the A point now, but I also know that there's still a Panzer IV in the forest. I can just see him there, coming around the side of the building while I'm angling my camera. So he doesn't see me. I'm going to go for the side, try and get the driver, but just get the gunner, swing the hull around again, and hopefully just get a really, really dirty kill there. Pens right through the um, the floor armor and knocks him out. God, that's satisfying. So, not a lot left now. I'm just going to go up to the point, uh, cap that, and see what else there is left to wipe up. So I'm not too worried about anything left at this point. All of the good tanks are gone. It's just going to be killing a couple of SPA and the old Panzer IV. So I can be a little bit more lax with it and not be too worried. As seeing that Marder early game did make me think, okay, maybe I can't be that as aggressive. And I think it was. A, a kind of good lesson to learn early on, um, at least, because um, otherwise I'm just going to be, you know, running into tanks that can pen me, and I'm just I'm not going to be thinking about it. But it does um, really pay off to keep that in mind while you're playing. They're not always going to be as invincible. Um, a lot of people are saying it's like the low tier KV1. It's, oh, it's completely impenetrable. Uh, it's not. You know, you've still got to be careful with it. You are going to run into things, especially against Germany, that can just one shot you through the front. And um, since it is a premium vehicle and you're spending money on it, you're going to want to be um, careful as well. So, so, for some reason, the Sturm Panzer there just dies for no reason. But regardless, um, I'm going to roll up to the spawn area just to try and clean up anything else, stop them from coming back into the town. And as at this point in the game, I don't really consider it spawn camping because there's nowhere else for me to really go on the map. I know that everything's going to be coming out of the spawn. So the simplest thing for me to do is just kind of hang around, make sure that nothing's going to come back and cap the points, because I am I'm relatively quick for a heavy tank, but I'm not quick enough to cover a lot of ground, so if I can stop all of the tanks at the bottleneck of the spawn into the town, it's just going to make everything a little bit more simple. So I'm just going to drive over towards the B point now, because we've lost a tank over there. So I'm just going to check, and we have lost a tank at C as well, so I'm going to see if I can get some shots up onto that point. And I do see a Sturm Panzer just rolling up, doesn't see me. And try and go centre mass, but fail horrifically and shoot the driver in the head. Uh, shoot the engine, just to make sure I don't mess anything up. And just strafe the rest of the crew, so it's another simple kill like that. And at this point, it's just a lot of me driving back and forth until something happens. Uh, I do try and go up to the C point, go check if the B point's clear. But it's just going to take way too long for me to actually get over to the C point. And there is a tank on A now as well, so I'm just going to roll back and cut until something happens. <laughs> so, um, as I was driving up and back from the C point, I started getting shot in the back. And at the start, I didn't, for some reason, 
I didn't really think that it was an enemy tank. I don't know why. Um, I was like, oh, green tracers. Tits. That's an enemy. <laughs> so I had to swing around and it was something in the spawn. I didn't really want to engage anything coming out of the spawn directly like that. It's just, it feels a bit cheap to me. Shoot into the side, but I do get stuck on the track, which severely limits the amount of post pen that I do get. He's firing APHE at me, so I know that I can be a little bit cheeky with it. Kill the turret crew again with a bit more of a decent shot there. So I think I can just ignore the C point and roll up and finish him off, as I do want to eventually go up there. But he knows I'm here, and I, I, I am going to sort of have to push the spawn to take him out. And my rule with it is that if it's a tank in the spawn and it doesn't see me, I'm not going to engage it. I'm just going to drive away and engage it later, because it's not, it's not something I want to do. So... Try and hit him, but I do get the aim a little bit wrong quite consistently, actually, in this fight. Um, go into the side with the 75, and he does completely overpen. And he does knock out my um, hull gun with the heat as well. So I'm just going to get distracted by the police car that's going by. I mean, he's doing his job over the holidays. Fair play to him. And it does distract from my horrible job at taking out that Panzer IV. <laughs> so... Anyway, sorry that match was such um, a drag with my commentary. Bloody hell, that was dreadful. But yes, a uh, 10 kill game, a um, decent amount of score, and a decent amount of points as well. Um, I think I get about five, 6,000. Yeah, 6,000, so it's a um, decent result um, for a low tier with a low tier premium reward, and it was quite, um, quite a nice thing to see. So I think it is still a decent premium, but probably not the best. So, um, the reflection bit, I guess. Well... It's a really fun tank. It's really satisfying to get kills with the coax, um, the coax gun, excuse me, the hull-mounted gun. And after a bit of practice, it can really pay off, and it does compensate for the reload, or the really stupidly long reload of the um, the turret-mounted uh, 47 mm So I think if you can't afford the Sherman, what you should do is you should buy the char, talisman a vehicle you like in tier three, and use that until you can get something like the Lorraine or something else to enjoy in tier 4 or tier 5 and talisman that. That's going to be the quickest way to unlock the entire tree. But if you can't do that, um, and the only thing you could afford, say, would be the char, I wouldn't do it. You're going to want to get um, at least a tier 3 vehicle to whack a talisman on. Because whereas this thing is fun, it's going to struggle a little bit researching anything higher than tier 3. Because the reward is low and it's low tier, so it's not going to be super efficient. I mean, you can still do it if you have a lot of fun with it. But... Um, if you're on a budget and this is all you can get, I think going for a talisman is probably the best option, uh, in the long run at least. Um, for the tank itself, it is um, it's really it is really good, but again, it's not completely overpowered. And if you do meet just one of those vehicles that can give you some trouble, it's just going to wipe you out completely. If you're in an up tier as well, say against Germany, you know, you've got the long 50mm, the Panzer IV F2s, you know, you're know you going to struggle to pen them frontally as well, especially with the, the applique armor as well. And it's just going to be a little bit tedious like that. And whereas with most other lineups, um, you can take out another tank um, that maybe is like as a bit of a bigger gun or is quicker, like um, a bit more mobile, uh, that you can counter that up to with. At least you can do a little bit more damage. But the lineup for 2.7 France at the moment is a little bit um, lackluster in that regard. All of the other tanks you can take sort of fill the same role, and they're not really that effective in an up tier either because they all use the same gun. I mean, sure, it's good. But. Um, because they're not really that quick, they're just like um, slower, less armoured chars. They play like that because um, you can't really do too much with them. They're just normal, well, tank tanks, I guess. Uh, well, they just have the normal playstyle of doing tank stuff. There's nothing really unique about it. So the lineup isn't really varied to cope with an up tier. Uh, you can still do okay with it, sure. Like um, when I was playing arcade and stuff, I had a couple of 3.3 um, .3 games in the char and I, I did really well. But again, it's not something that's going to be constantly good or reliable that you can do. So, you know, against certain nations, you're just going to run into stuff that can wipe you out as well. Uh, just through the turret, through the hull, anything. And, you know, if you get shot in the back by anything, there's no way you can come back from that because your turret traverse is so slow. You know, you're just, you're dead. You need to be really careful where you position the tank as well. And um, one little tip that I found while playing it is that you need to always angle the turret completely towards whatever you're shooting at because the sides... Uh, can just go right, just pen right through. I'd engage him with a couple of honies, and they were bouncing off. Like I think they bounced about ten shots off me. But as soon as I angled my turret ever so slowly, this went right through the side, and I just disabled the tank. So it was a um, something to avoid. Just always point your turret directly at what you're shooting at. 
angle the hull as much as you like, but not too far either way. Because either way, excuse me, God, I can't announce it to save my life today. Because <laughs> there are a couple of flat parts that can just get go get shot through, and it's a little bit tricky. But um, it's still fantastic for what it is. It's got great guns. The reload's a bit bad. The mobility for heavy is good. The armor is reliable in some situations, a bit too reliable in some situations, but it's not a reliable grinder because you can't just go into a match every single match and do constantly well like you could with a tank like the IS-6 or something. So it's good, but there's no fallback if you do get put into a map or a situation where you can't do very well. But it's still a decent vehicle. It does what it, it does what it does really well. It does the job of a heavy at low tier, which is something that I think is rarely accomplished by anything like the T-35 or the the um, the Rogo or anything like that. So it does do its job well. It's a really fun, uh, unique little vehicle. And I think I will rate it a 7 out of 10. So there we are. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, my commentary has been a bit naff. Um, today, so I apologise about that, I'm really, really tired, but I did want to get this out um, before Christmas, so there's something to watch over the, the break if you're a bit bored. Um, also, because some of you might know, I, I do have to spend Christmas on my own, so I will be streaming over Christmas if you'd like to come and say hello, if you're perhaps on your own as well, or you're just really bored with your boring family, but um, <laughs> if not, um, good luck in the giveaway, and I hope you have a really, really fun time, and you get lots of money to buy lots of shiny new tanks with. So <laughs> thank you very much for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.